Hi guys, welcome to CounterPoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down my Bolter. Now, before we get into the breakdown, let me break something else down for you. The phenomenal products from the veteran-owned and run Hawkins & Company, available to you at an exclusive discount when you use code CounterPoints at checkout. Not only do they bring you some of the finest American-made leather products in the country, they've expanded into selling Buck brand knives, beautiful, razor-sharp blades ready for everyday carry or your next outdoor excursion. This is on top of a wide assortment of wallets, including minimalist, bifold, biker, and trucker style. They also fashion rugged belts meant to upgrade your wardrobe and bring some of that fine sophistication that only handmade leather can offer. I've been carrying their bifold for going on six months, and I have beaten the heck out of it with daily carry and heavy use, and all the stitches are perfect, and the leather is as supple as the day I bought it. So many things in our world are synthetic, fake, corporate, and soulless, but Hawkins & Company continues to be a great friend of the channel and puts their soul into their business. Check them out today and reward them with your business. Use code COUNTERPOINTS to get a fantastic discount. Now onto the show. Today we're going to break down the bolter, why it exists, how my bolter performs against the tissues of various Xenos, and finally, how I built it and how you can get your very own. For the uninitiated, the bolter is a 75 caliber gyrojet assisted rifle with an explosive round. The Warhammer 40,000 universe is filled with all sorts of monstrous threats, and the bolter is used to kill everything from chaos corrupted humans to monstrous aliens. It is a standard issue weapon of the Space Marines, while mortal warriors such as myself will have access to them on a limited basis. There is a famous quote from a civilian seeing a Space Marine for the first time asking, what wars must there be in creation that requires warriors? like you. And that question can be re-asked. What kind of monsters must there be in creation that requires weapons like the Bolter? When humanity first spread to the stars, they encountered beasts like the Yaucha, Xenomorph, and Navi. And the truth is, our weapons were not up to the task. A majority of weapons were designed with the limits of human physiology in mind, and were too small to take down these stronger and hardier races. Many engagements were in space or in pressurized colonial environments, and so small calibers were maintained, but we began designing explosive and fragmenting rounds to increase lethality. The Colonial Marine M41A Pulse Rifle, as an example, fires a 10 millimeter explosive tipped round meant to punch and detonate in its target while not ripping through the lengths of a colonial ship and venting everyone into space. For ease of manufacturing, this standard was maintained through the bug war. When we first encountered bugs, also known as arachnids and terminids, we knew we had to change up. This is because that abhorrent race fielded thousands of massive creatures reinforced with chitin armor, and we had to get to the gooey insides in order to bring them down. We first did that by heavily adopting shotguns and testing out various slugs to stagger our opponents and incendiary ammunition to cook them. This was good, but it was only a temporary solution meant as a stopgap until the development of the widely fielded protobolter known as the JAR-5 Dominator. The Dominator used gyro jets to rocket assist their ammunition to and into their target and used a smart detonation system to erupt the insides. This was wildly effective and became a go-to weapon for special forces facing monstrous threats. This development remained important through the Dark Age of Technology and the Collapse, with Bolter variants being found in the wastelands of Terra during the Unification Wars. The Bolters can rip through various targets with ease, make it a potent weapon, but also has a psychological component where most enemies capable of feeling fear will flee battlefields where they just saw their brothers in arms get ripped apart by explosive rounds. To demonstrate these effects, I got a few targets from my local Magos Biologus. When I asked them how he got these samples, he said, Shut up, meatbag. First up, we have some Tau flesh to show what it does to those peace loving Gundam suit wearing fish headed freaks. Next up, we have some Orc flesh. Orcs are a fungus-based bioweapon capable of taking down a planet in months. They grow to the size of Terran moose and have the strength of Terran gorillas. Knowing you can take one down in a scrap is a huge morale booster for Imperial troops. Next up, we have the shoulder blade of a gene stealer, a horrible infiltration and melee variant of the Tyranid Brood. Now here's a slab of Chaos Ogren. Know your place, trash! Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get an Eldar sample today, but here's me blowing up random targets for your enjoyment. <laughs> Where'd it go? Now let's break down this beautiful piece of engineering. If you made it this far in the video, I wanna thank you and ask that you like, share, and subscribe.
I also ask that you harass your favorite streamer to react to this, and I ask that if you want to help fund future projects where we build and test your favorite science fiction weapons, you donate to our Indiegogo or join our Patreon linked in the description. I want to build more science fiction weapons and make them available for you, like a bolt pistol and chainsword, like the M41A pulse rifle, like the Gears of War Lancer, like the Halo assault rifle, magnum pistol, and shotgun, and I want to pick platforms that are inexpensive enough to be easily built, sanded, painted, and assembled, and sold to you at a reasonable price. That being said, how did I build this damn thing? The naysayers in the comments are correct. The base of this weapon is a 12 gauge Rock Island VRF-14 and I have not manufactured true lore accurate bolts. But I also think that it needs to be pointed out that lore accurate bolters are 75 caliber, whereas mine is 72, which I'm gonna go ahead and call close enough. 12 gauge is the perfect round for this project, not just because of its size, but also because you can achieve various effects from specialty ammunition. If you want a heart stopper, you can get a slug. If you want to pierce your target, you can use a sabo. If you want something that explodes on impact and leaves a nice burn, there are incendiary tracers. And if you want something with a little rocket assist and an explosive impact, there are custom slug manufacturers that do work using black powder as propellant, black powder as incendiary, and 22 blank rounds as an impact primer. I did try to buy incendiary tracers and custom slugs for this video shoot, but the truth is I just didn't have enough time or money to get it done. When it comes to the weapon itself, I'll break down its components without disassembly and improvements I would make if given the time and money to do so. Working from muzzle to butt, the muzzle is the default VRF-14 front end. I did use some clamp on muzzle brakes, but the truth is I was beating the crap out of them and they either didn't have the right aesthetic, were prohibitively expensive, or didn't work at all. If you help fund my Indiegogo, link down in the description, then I will get a four axis desktop CNC machine and I will build a lore accurate bolter muzzle device for use in future models, along with some other goodies. Next, when it comes to the handguard, this is all 3D printed in PLA plus plastic. I did all the design work myself. I'm not an engineer, but I was able to measure and print and measure and print and measure and print until I had a solid object that locked in snugly. I first tried removing the factory handguard from the VRF-14 and replacing it with my own, but the truth is that 3D printed plastic is not as strong or heat resistant as injection molded plastic, and so I instead opted to mount my furniture on top of the factory handguard. The furniture locks in multiple places, wrapping snugly around the rear of the firearm, the chamber of the firearm, and uses the original handguard rail system to prevent forward movement. I eventually would love to do a monolithic upper for ease of manufacturing, but I also wanted to keep it simple so anyone can do this at home. This was all printed on an Anycubic Viper, which is an entry-level printer with a print bed that is around 10 inches long, wide, and high. I was able to get one for $200 refurbished and has served me darn well. The furniture locks together using metal screws. I used M5 screws and M5 heat inserts, allowing me to melt threads into the furniture and then use screws to lock it all together. Finally, I had to experiment with infill settings, but ended up at 50%, which has taken a beating and then some. This is sanded and then painted with some rattle cans, so we can definitely improve on the finish and painting department, but I was so freaking excited to show this thing off, well, uh, we'll work on that. So how do you get one? There's two options. At this time, I do not have a business. I work full time, I have two side hustles, and I have a young family. As I mentioned, I wanna build more science fiction weapons like a bolt pistol and chainsword, the M41A pulse rifle, the Gears of War Lancer, the Halo assault rifle, battle rifle, magnum pistol, and shotgun. I wanna make an aluminum and steel gravity hammer and Sanghealy sword and a Tana straight silver knife. And I wanna pick platforms and materials that are inexpensive enough to be easily built, sanded, painted, and assembled and sold to you at a reasonable price. Before I can make a move on that though, there are costs I hope that this video is reaching the algorithm and maybe your financial support can help with. The Biden administration has made it so if you sell weapons for a profit, you have to have a federal firearms license. The license I would need is $200 and I can apply and foot the bill myself. That's not a problem, but that could take time. I also wanna buy a four axis desktop CNC machine so I can make other parts like the muzzle brake and knives that would be all in metal. Let's just call these items spicy cosplay props. And I need to know there's interest if I'm going to invest a sizable amount of time and money into this project. So if you are interested in seeing me do that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, donate if you can, share it with friends, and check out the other content to help me out. The second option is you can buy a Rock Island VRF-14 for around $600. You can download my 3D print STLs listed in the description for $75, and then you can get some heat inserts and screws and print and assemble your own. I will make a start to finish assembly video and publicly post it, likely on an alternative channel for monetization reasons. Please be patient as we get this all sorted out because I'm sure logistics and links and websites will change, but you, yes you, can have your own functional bolter for less than a thousand bucks and some elbow grease. Which brings us to the end for now. Like, share, comment, ring the bell, check out all the breakdown content on the channel, check out the Unified Timeline video, and go get a beautiful leather wallet from Hawkins & Company. Support our other sponsors, join the Patreon to help support the channel, support the Indiegogo to get us started, and join the Discord to hang out with other nerds. I appreciate you, catch you in the next one, until the end. Ha, 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 ha.